On the unit circle, sketch an angle in standard position whose degree measure is 240 and find the exact value of sine of 240. So below we have a unit circle that we can use to sketch on and they want us to do two things, sketch the angle and then calculate the exact value of the angle. So in this case we can't just type into our calculator sine 240 and get the answer because they want an exact value and your calculator um, you put your calculator in degree mode you put this in and you're going to get some decimal number but it is a good idea to uh, once you find the exact value using the unit circle to then see what that what the decimal equivalent of that value is and compare it to what you get in your calculator that's a good way to check to see if you got the right answer but in this case we're going to use the unit circle method. So first let's sketch 240. So we, you should know when you're sketching angles on the unit circle you always start from the x-axis and you go counterclockwise. So 90 degrees and you can actually label this right so it starts at 0 degrees and then it's 90 degrees, 180 and 270. So that's a little bit of a, a review of the unit circle and if you're using radians it would be 0 and then this would be pi over 2 and this would be pi, and this would be 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. So one full revolution is 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. Anyway, we start from the x-axis, and we go around counterclockwise. That's 180, and then we want to stop short of where 270 would be, and we draw this little arrow to point to the angle we're interested in. And the angle might look something like this. All right, so that's it and then then we pretty much just label that as being 240 so that's all that we really need to do in order to complete the first part which is sketching the angle so if you did that nothing else you'd get half credit and now they want to know what is the exact value of sine of 240 so that's our next goal well for that we need to find what's called a reference angle now some students that are pretty comfortable with the unit circle might not bother with the reference angle. They might just draw this triangle here. Whoops. And analyze it, right? They may be able to figure out its angles and then find out what the sign would be. But we're going to do it the textbook way, which is to find the reference angle. The reference angle is an angle in the first quadrant somewhere up here that has the same sign as this angle 240 would have even though 240 is in the third quadrant down here. So the way to find the reference angle is to find the distance that your angle is away from the x-axis. So if it's in the third quadrant we're really finding this. That's how far away it is from the x-axis. If it was out here in the fourth quadrant we'd be finding the distance of how far it is from this part of the x-axis. But for this case, it's like that. If it was in the second quadrant, then we'd be subtracting the angle minus 180. I'm sorry, 180 minus the angle. So just hypothetically, if you had some angle that was in the second quadrant, you would do 180 minus that angle, because that would be the distance away from the x-axis. But I don't want to confuse you, so that's not what we're doing in this case. In this case, we're finding... 240 minus 180. So let's just jot that down. The reference angle, reference angle, in this case is 240, that's the angle we started with, minus 180. And that's going to tell us the total number of degrees between the angle and the x axis. So that is 60 degrees. So now let's draw that angle 60 degrees. What does that look like? If we had, it would probably look something like this, right? Uh, maybe that's a bit extreme. That should do. All right. So if that was the angle we had, that would just be 60 degrees. And now what's the sine of 60 degrees? Again, we can't use the calculator. We have to do this using the unit circle. So you may have memorized this, and if you did, then you can just go right ahead. But if you haven't, let me draw this triangle a little differently, actually.
Yeah. So now I'm going to take this triangle. So it's still 60 degrees. But I want to take this triangle here and pull it out. So I'm going to draw it over off on the side here. All right, so this is our triangle. It's 60 degrees. This is a right angle. And this is 30 degrees. So if I asked you what's the sine of 60, you'd say, well, sine, that's easy. That's just opposite over hypotenuse, right? And this triangle's on the unit circle. So the hypotenuse is always 1. That's this, right? That's always 1. And what's the opposite? Well, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? So if you remember your 30, 60, 90 rules, the shorter leg, which is down here, the shorter leg is always half of the hypotenuse. So the shorter leg must be one half, because the hypotenuse is one. And the longer leg, which is opposite the 60, that's over here, that's the opposite side is the longer leg. The shorter leg is the adjacent side, in this case, is always the shorter leg times the square root of 3. So in this case, that's root 3 times 1 half, so root 3 over 2. So we're interested in the sine of 60, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2 over 1. So anything over 1 is itself. That's just root 3 over 2. So what we just found was the, the exact value of the sine of 60. And now all we have to do is just make sure about the sign, whether this should be positive or negative, and that will give us the exact value of the sign of 240. So in the first quadrant, is the sign positive or negative? So for this, remember your mnemonic. You have all students take calculus, right? So all these quantities, sine, cosine, and tangent, are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, only the sign is positive. In the third quadrant, only the tangent is positive. So the sign is actually negative down here. Sine is negative down here, whereas the sign is positive up here. So if the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2, then the sine of 240 is going to be negative root 3 over 2. And that is your final answer.